In today's program, we hope to help you better understand the WinLink system by telling you about the message types, the pathways they take, and the modes required to do it in the WinLink Global Radio Messaging System. WinLink started in the late 1990s and is also known as the WinLink 2000 network. WinLink is an all-volunteer project of the Amateur Radio Safety Foundation, which is a non-profit, public benefit corporation. What really is WinLink? In its simplest terms, WinLink is a worldwide system for transferring email via radio. WinLink has global connectivity. These maps show some of the many RMS stations worldwide. WinLink also has a wide range of users. WinLink has traditionally been associated with amateur radio. This includes the casual ham operator using the system for his everyday email. It also includes amateurs that volunteer their services in many other organizations. In this program, all of the examples we will look at are based on the amateur radio users. Another major user of WinLink is emergency communications. These include groups using WinLink for local, state, national, and international emergencies. The redundancy, flexibility, and off-grid independence built into the WinLink system make it a strong player in the emergency communications environment. A lesser-known group of WinLink users are city, state, and our national government. And this also is true both within the United States and for governments around the world. Also included in this category would be many allied agencies helping with government operations. They have all learned that WinLink gets the emails through when other operations are not available. For the general public, maybe one of the least known users of WinLink is Maritime. WinLink is used at sea for email, position reporting, and receiving valuable weather information. These are all features that are built into WinLink's RMS Express software. Search and Rescue have also used WinLink communications to successfully get to distressed ships when normal voice operations were not possible. Here is the big picture view of the transfer paths in the WinLink system. It consists of amateur radio stations, also known as ham operators, which originate and receive email. RMS stations, and CMS servers. So let's take a closer look at the actual operation of the WinLink system. The first thing we need to look at are the different types of messages sent as WinLink email. WinLink operates primarily on software developed for the system by the WinLink development team. The software is called RMS Express. There are other softwares that can be used with the system like Outlook, AirMail, PackLink, and BPQ, but RMS Express is what is recommended. When you create an email message in the RMS Express program, you create it as a WinLink message or a peer-to-peer -peer message. If you create a WinLink message, the assumption is that there will be one or more hops between the message originator and the end user. A WL2K message will be addressed to a call sign at winlink.org. It can also be addressed to any standard internet email address if it's to be delivered outside the WinLink system. And finally, the subject line has to start with forward slash forward slash WL2K. The other type of message is peer to peer. This is a direct message between two radio operators. In this case, the only thing that needs to be in the address line is the call sign of the recipient. In this example, it's K4REF. Once a type of message is chosen, we can now choose an automated session that is going to be used to send that message. As you can see, there are both WL2K sessions and peer-to-peer -peer sessions listed in the session drop-down window in RMS Express. The next thing we want to look at 
are the different paths that the WinLink message can take as it makes its way through the system. The paths are WinLink, peer-to-peer, radio only, and post office. Again, the path taken is determined by the message type and the session chosen. The first path we want to look at is WinLink. WinLink is also referred to as WL2K. You'll notice that RMS Express has a group of sessions listed as WL2K sessions. This is a typical path of a WinLink or WL2K message. In this case, my friend Bob, KD7WKO, wants to send an email to Gary, AG4XO. Well, let's see how that's done. KD7WKO starts out by contacting a RMS station. In this case, it's VA3LKI, my friend Michael's pack door station in Canada. RMS stations are called radio message servers. KD7WKO uses RMS Express to pass his email to VA3LKI. If that station is connected to a CMS server, in this case Perth, then VA3LKI is considered to be a radio message server gateway because it has access to the Internet and to Perth, so the email message reaches Perth. Once the message reaches a CMS server, it is duplicated out to all five of the common message servers located all around the world. In normal operations, these servers are really the backbone of the WinLink system. As long as there is at least one of these servers operational, the system path can function. KD7WKO's email will sit on these servers until requested. The final link takes place when AG4XO contacts an RMS station using RMS Express to send and receive his email. In this fully automated process, he is connected to K4REF-10, which is my RMS VHF packet station in Knoxville. The station then contacts one of the CMS servers, in this case Halifax, and pulls down AG4XO's email and sends it on to him. So, this is a typical set of WinLink connections. It shows the pathways from and to the ham radio stations, the radio message server stations, and the CMS servers. If the Internet goes down locally or regionally so that nearby RMS stations cannot connect to the CMS servers, it is still possible for the system to function. The originating station just has to reach out further to an active RMS gateway where the Internet still exists. In this case, KD7WKO was able to reach out of the Tennessee Valley to VA3LKI in Canada and thus send the email on its way into the WinLink system. The next path we want to look at is peer-to-peer, -peer, also known as P2P. You'll notice that the RMS Express software has a group of sessions that are listed as P2P. Peer-to-peer -peer really just means person-to-person. -person. KD7WKO wants to send an email to WA4BDS, his friend Roy. All he needs to do is make a direct connection between the two radios. So, KD7WKO uses RMS Express to connect to WA4BDS and send his email message. It's called a P2P session. So, whether it's across town using VHF frequencies or across the country with HF frequencies, this type of connection is still considered a direct peer-to-peer -peer contact. The third path we want to take a look at is radio only. These can be WL2K or P2P types of connections. You'll notice that in the RMS Express software we have a group of radio only sessions. I'm often asked, what happens if the internet goes down altogether and the CMS servers become unusable? The answer is the system converts to a message pickup station path. In our example here, KD7WKO wants to email WA4BDS. The first thing that needs to take place is that WA4BDS has to tell the WinLink system which station he wants to use to pick up his emails. 
With the Internet down, there are no massive servers available to use for storage and transfer of the enormous number of emails that normally need to move through the Winlink system. Each ham radio station will need to choose from one to three message pickup stations so that the system can store his emails for pickup. With everyone in the system choosing a different set of MPS stations, it spreads storage across the system and minimizes the transfers needed. Since all messages will have to make all of their hops only by radio now, limiting the pickup stations makes the system much more efficient. To do this, WA4BDS goes to the hybrid network parameters in his RMS Express software and chooses three stations to be used to hold his email for pickup. So when the emails go into the system from any of the hundreds of stations, those emails will make their way to the three stations that WA4BDS has chosen. So, when KD7WKO sends an email out to WA4BDS, he does not have to know which stations are WA4BDS's MPS stations. He just connects to a working WinLink hybrid station, and the email will be passed along to the appropriate MPS station. In this case, KD7WKO connects to VA3LKI and sends the email out. VA3LKI then copies the message out to KR4MA and N0IA, which are the message pickup stations for WA4BDS. The last step is for WA4BDS to check his email, in this case connecting to N0IA, and his email is passed along to his station. The last path we want to look at is post office. This path uses a local area network or a mesh network. You'll notice that on the RMS Express Session drop-down, the Telnet Post Office is listed. By choosing Telnet Post Office, we're going to choose a particular call sign and computer IP address as the location for the WinLink Post Office on this network. Again, this can be a local area network or a mesh network. A mesh network is one that uses wireless routers, operating on amateur radio frequencies to transfer information. So, email is sent to the post office to be held there till the receiving user checks in for it, all using RMS Express. Well, now that we've looked at the two types of email messages and the typical pathways that those messages take through the WinLink system, let's look at the modes that are used to move that email. The modes of WinLink are based on the hardware being used and the group of radio frequencies that the messages travel on. The first unique one we want to look at is Telnet. When we say Telnet, what we're really talking about is using a network, or most commonly, the Internet. In this example, my friend John, KJ4JRL, wants to send an email to my AOL account but he wants to use the WinLink system to do it. So he uses RMS Express and makes a Telnet connection to the Halifax CMS server. The email goes there and then it goes out on the internet and to my AOL account. I can also use this same mode to send and return email from my AOL account to John via the same route. If John had wanted to use only the WinLink system, he could have addressed the email to my call sign k4ref at winlink.org. Still using RMS Express, he would have then passed the email to the Halifax server with a Telnet connection. The email would have resided on the CMS servers until I checked for it. When I use RMS Express to connect to a CMS server and download my email to my computer. Both of these are examples of Telnet mode of connections in the WinLink system. The next mode we want to look at is Packet and Robust Packet on VHF. Packet and Robust Packet both use VHF frequencies, which are basically short distance frequencies, normally 50 miles or less. This mode uses boxes that are described as TNCs, which stands for Terminal Node Controllers. The Cantronics KPC9612 is a very popular example of a packet TNC.
It's basically an external box that connects to both the PC and the ham radio and converts sound to and from the radio to digital signals the computer can use. With the robust packet mode, you are using a very specific TNC called the tracker that is made by SCS. So if you're using an SCS tracker, you're using robust packet. The next mode we'll cover is Pactor, which uses HF frequencies. Pactor uses HF frequencies. These group of frequencies are used for long distance connections. They can stretch across the country or across the world. Pactor controllers are made by SCS and are considered multi-mode units. They automatically configure themselves to run in P1, P2, P3 and the new P4 mode of transfer. Most of the SES units are capable of using up to P3. The new SES Dragon runs in P4, which is extremely fast. One other aspect of these multi-mode units is that they can also be used to run packet mode sessions. Continuing on our list of modes, the next one is Winmore. Winmore uses HF frequencies. Winmore operates on HF frequencies like Pactor does. These again are for long distance transmissions. Winmore is actually a software based signal converter. It is built into the RMS Express software, so there is no external box. Winmore uses the radio's audio directly and then does the signal conversion in the computer. Since many computers built in sound cards don't have optimum performance for this process, an external shielded sound card is usually recommended. The most popular one is called a signal link. Additionally, you'll find other interfaces like Rig Blaster. One additional nice feature of these external sound interfaces is that they have volume controls for easy adjustments. Winmore's biggest disadvantage is that it transfers email at a much slower rate than Pactor, but the good news is that it is very inexpensive to acquire. The last mode we want to look at is the setup for post office. This mode assumes that there is a network in place to connect to and take advantage of. Post office is typically used with a LAN network which is a local area network comprised of computers that can talk directly with each other. What happens is that one of the computers in the group is designated as the post office for the system. An email is transferred back and forth through the post office to its users. A variation on post office is the use of the new mesh networks. These networks use wireless routers that operate on ham radio frequencies and have been reprogrammed for use for this purpose. Mesh networks allow users to go wireless with their WinLink emails, which can be a very powerful tool in emergency environments. So, there you have it. We've not covered all of it, but we have taken a brief overview of the WinLink email system. Specifically, we've looked at the two types of WinLink messages. We've looked at the typical pathways that those messages can travel on. And we've looked at the different modes that are determined by the hardware and frequencies that are chosen for use by WinLink operators. And that brings us back to the big picture view of WinLink. We hope this program has been helpful to you in understanding what the global email system called WinLink is all about. For more in-depth and descriptive information on WinLink, please go to the main website at winlink.org. You can get everything there, from current WinLink news to all the details of WinLink in the Book of Knowledge. If you want to learn how to install, configure, and operate RMS Express, please go to my YouTube channel by searching for K4REF and watch my complete WinLink RMS Express training series that covers all the details of how to get started. Before wrapping up, I wanted to say a special thank you to my script consultant and content advisor, Steve Waterman, K4CJX. So, from all of the hardworking volunteers, station operators, network managers, and the entire WinLink development team, 73 from K4REF. <laughs>